back we are on let's do it nine of our study of equilibrium so let's take a look at this in this case we are looking at yet another decomposition sulfur trioxide going to sulfur dioxide plus oxygen so the reaction was given to us again remember that rice grid won't now I have a volume here and if you want to just kind of put a V by it with an arrow that can sometimes help and I have a molarity so that's a capital M I have a K value so there's my K and it's a KC in concentration now before it's allowed to decompose it, you know maybe it's being chilled or whatever and then it'll be brought up to conditions that will allow it it is transferred to a new volume so you notice that we have a volume going to a volume that means you got it we've got a voom voom we have to do our dilution now there isn't a stoichiometry but we do need to complete that dilution before we can plug into our rice so my first volume it was 0 0.100 liters and my first molarity was 0 0.025 molar and that was transferred to a 0 0.250 liter flask so I need to calculate my new molarity and if you do that little bit of algebra you'll find a new molarity of 0 0.010 um, zero. let's keep to two sig figs like the first molarity was molar no source of this no source of that now my KC always set up the expression without numbers is my SO2 squared times O2 over my SO3 squared. Now my guess is that the algebra here is going to be pretty tricky because it's likely we're going to have an S cubed in our problem, but I know y'all can handle tricky algebra, not worried a bit. Now there will come a time when we can do some neglecting and I hope this is one of those and you'll see that. Other times we're going to have to go ahead and do more algebra. Now, KC is given, so I know that my KC is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 10th. Now, you notice that this is a very, very small K value, and that means that the equilibrium lies very far to the reactant side. There's much more reactant present than product. Now, that's a 1 and a 2 and a 2. It has to form product and consume reactant because there's no product so this is going to be plus x plus 2x and this is going to be minus 2x so now if we add i plus c 0 0.01 minus 2x 2x and x now here's where we can simplify our work if this number subtracted we can't ever do this when things are multiplied only when they're added and subtracted if this is very very small very small small compared to 0.01 I can neglect it and a way to estimate that is this you take the number in front in this case <coughs> excuse me 0.01 and if that number is greater than a hundred times your given KC, then we can neglect this amount. What that means is that's going to be very, very small compared to 0 0.01. Be like taking minus or 0 0.01 minus like 0 0.000001 or something like that. So if I took a hundred times KC, so a hundred times KC, and that's our question mark, is that 0 0.01 greater than 1.6? times 10 to the minus 8th and indeed it is so we're going to neglect that as a first step in higher level chemistry you'll come back and pick it up at later states but we're going to neglect it so if we plug in now we have 1.6 is equal to 2x squared times x over 0.01 squared and that 1.6 was times 10 to the minus 10 sorry about that now 
I'm going to let you deal with that algebra at this point. And when you do, once you do all that algebra, you should find that x is equal to 7.37 times 10 to the minus fifth. And so we can substitute that in for all of our x values. And for our SO3, we would get 0 0.0099, which indeed is very, very close to 0.01. For our SO2 concentration, we would get 1.5 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. And for our oxygen concentration, that is equal to x. So we would get 7. Point, let's call that 7.4 times 10 to the minus fifth molar. So if you're not getting those values uh, with your algebra, we either need to check mine or you need to come in and make sure you understand how to do that. Now let's go on to the next question. What was the percent dissociation? I think it's important to bring that into the picture. And to get the percent dissociation, we take the amount that reacted, which remember was equivalent to 2x in our rice, divided by our initial amount, which was 0.01, and then it's a percent, so it's times 100. So that would equal 2 times x, which was 7.4, times 10 to the minus fifth, okay, over 0 0.01 times 100. So again, that tricky little algebra, if I did that right, I get 1.48%. Now, we don't usually uh, report percents in terms of a table because they don't tend to be constant. K's are constant with a given temperature. So you can find those values readily available on the internet or I'll show you my uh, big book of very, very important chemistry constants in class one day. Now let's take a look at our last problem. You do it 11. That's our last one before we uh, get into talking about solubility product, a different type of K, but solved the same way effectively. So now we're at 2000 Kelvin, and we have an equilibrium constant. It's for the synthesis of NO. So we're going to synthesize nitrogen monoxide. Um, it's elements. So let me rewrite that in a better color for you. So we're going to synthesize nitrogen monoxide. And that means my equilibrium sign should actually be there. And we're going to synthesize it from its elements, which are nitrogen and oxygen. So that should be a plus sign right there. Okay, And I have to balance it. It is expected that you can do a simple equation like that. And in, on the AP test, that would likely be question one. Write the balanced chemical reaction for this synthesis. Now let's check what we have. We have a volumes of these 10 mLs of each, and that molarity is nitrogen monoxide. Sorry about that, nitrogen monoxide. And we have a final volume. So we have volume added to volume. So yes, indeedy, we do have to do the D in our little checklist. There is not a stoichiometry, but we do need to do the dilution before we can plug into our rice equation. So if you notice both nitrogen and oxygen are the same, I changed the problem to make them the same, otherwise the algebra would have been just wicked. So we have 10 mLs of each. We have an initial molarity of 2.5. And then we dilute that up to 100 mLs. So that's 100 mLs times our new molarity. And when we plug those in, we would get 0 0.25. In other words, it was a tenfold dilution for both of these. Now, the nitrogen monoxide is not the same, so we have to calculate that one. So we have 10 mLs times 0.084 m molarity. And again, we're diluting into the same flask times our new molarity. 
So what we get here is 0 0.0084. Now, notice we have values. All values are given as initials. And so we are going to have to calculate Q in order to do that. Well, let's set up the equilibrium constant expression. K in terms of C, because we were given molarities, is NO. Now remember, those are equilibrium values. I just want to emphasize that since we'll be using Q this time, times N2 at equilibrium and O2 at equilibrium. So once we have our equilibrium amounts, that's when we can plug into the K. To do Q, we use initial amounts. And then we compare, because we don't know if it should be minus, minus, plus, or plus, plus, minus. And that's why we need a Q, to tell us the direction that the reaction will proceed to reach equilibrium. So Q is going to be 0 0.0084, and I really want you to check my algebra on this. I just have my iPhone, and it can be awkward. And that's squared over 0.25 times 0.25. So if my algebra is right, I get 0 0.00113 for my Q. Now what we have to do is compare that to the K value that's different. So I have 1 times 10 to the minus 3. My K is 4 times 10 to the minus 4th, so Q is actually greater than K. If Q is greater than K, we're going to lose product and gain reactant in order to reach equilibrium. And I'll tell you, the first time I calculated this, I calculated my Q wrong, and I knew it because when I got to the end, I was coming up with negative concentrations. So I knew something was wrong, and I went back and started my algebra over again. And that's when I discovered my error. So this would be minus 2x plus x plus x. So 0 0.25 plus x, 0 0.25 plus x. Now, we can't really neglect anything here, uh, even though our rule might tell us we could, because then we'd have no x. And we have to solve for x. We have to find out how much of each of these is present at equilibrium. Now, I set up these numbers being equal, uh, particularly so our algebra wouldn't be so bad. So we're going to plug this in. 4.0 times 10 to the minus fourth is equal to 0 0.0084 minus 2x squared. Ooh, that does not look pretty at all. Over, remember it's products over reactants. I'm just plugging into this right now, all over. Now, these are the same, so it's 0 0.25 plus x squared. Now, I'm going to leave you with just this part of the algebra. Since both the top and the bottom are squared, you can take the square root of each side. And that will certainly simplify your algebra. And when I did that, I came up with x is equal to 1.71 times 10 to the minus third. So if we plug those in for each of our values there, what we would get 0.25 plus that, okay, plus x. So I would get, um, I'm going to let you work that out because I think I, did my, I didn't finish up my algebra from the previous problem. So I'm going to let you work out what these values are, and we will talk about them in class. So, But that is what I get for x, and that will give us a good start. So until I see you in class, this is saying Happy New Year.